Hi, I'm Diane Sweeney, and I wanted to just briefly spend a little time sharing out some practices we've been learning that relate to how to move student-centered coaching online. And this obviously is a really important question, is what does coaching look like now that schools are virtual and wholly online? And um, what's the role of a coach, especially a coach implementing student-centered coaching in this new context? So I thought I'd just put together a few things we've learned recently that we're playing around with that my team is thinking about. First of all, I do want to set the context and remind us that there's a lot of stages. There's stages that um, teachers, that coaches, that all educators, that families are moving through right now. And if we think about this first, I think it'll help us paint a picture for what, um, what the opportunities are for the work. So the first few weeks of school, um, quote, is a lot of the, the, where a lot of us are right now or recently are kind of getting through, which is how are we gonna get computers to kids? How are we gonna get bandwidth or Wi-Fi? Um, what are the lessons we're gonna design look like? How, are, how do we use the platforms? What are the expectations of the district? How much content, how much, how many, how much screen time? All of that are these questions that um, really are gonna be where coaches are gonna be spending their time in the next, you know, in the first few weeks. So think about it like building rituals and routines much like we do in the first few weeks of school. Then there's the question that is super important, the social emotional learning question or the humanity question or empathy is how are my students doing? Are they okay? Are they okay? Are they safe? Are they connected in a, in a um, social emotional way with others? Are they becoming isolated? Are they sad? Do they miss their teachers? So that piece of the work is going to be woven through um, obviously all of our connections with students, but it's important to frame out that stage three, which is what we'll talk about today, ha can't happen without stages one and two. Because stage three then is really the heart and soul of student-centered coaching, are my students learning? Once we make sure they're okay, once we make sure our systems are in place, we can't forget to go to the space of learning. Is learning happening? And actually what learning do we even expect at this, you know, at this part of the school year? So I wanted to remind you of our bullseye that we love because it really frames out the different ways coaching can look. And the outer ring is relationship driven coaching or resource providing. That's that first stage of getting things up and running. It's making sure we're checking in, making sure coaches are thinking with teachers about how to organize themselves to get the resources they need. So much of us have been spending our time here recently. It's an outer ring because it doesn't connect very directly to student learning, which is fine. It's foundational work. It's important. But you see the next ring in then is teacher-centered coaching. And the teacher-centered coaching ring is probably out the window right now because that ring focuses mostly on the discrete instructional practices teachers are using and making sure coaches are kind of in that space of making sure teachers are getting the support they need to teach well or to implement something. I think on some level this is less relevant right now simply because we're not working in classrooms with teachers to help them become more skillful at delivery of instruction. And that's really what a lot of the focus happens to be in teacher-centered coaching. Student-centered coaching then is in the inside ring. And that's the idea that we're really partnering with teachers to make sure we're using evidence to make sure kids are learning, to make sure they're moving along, and to make sure teachers feel like they have a partner in that question of, are my students learning? So we've been working a lot on my team with my team on what does a coaching cycle look like when it's student centered, but it's in an online context. And so we always start with what's the goal for students, specifically what's the goal for student learning. So these are going to be coaching questions like what's the focus of the unit? What are the students working on? A coach can partner up with a teacher in a unit and this is really where the beginning is. This is where the starting point is. So you may say to teachers, hey, when you launch your next unit, I'd like to invite, you know, to see if you'd be willing to 
invite me in and I can be a part of that unit from beginning to end. Part of this goal setting for students is establishing some learning targets. Um, that's not explicitly named here, but we'll get to that in just a second. So then the time allocated. I want to be super sensitive to time right now. And this is only a meeting. This is one conversation that would have to take place at the beginning of the unit. Once you have that in place, then it's time to think about what do the students already know? A lot of districts are focusing more on reviewing content, less introduction of new content, but no matter what, we have to be careful not to just upload a thousand lessons that haven't taken into consideration maybe some prior knowledge, some, some existing schema that students may carry with them. So as a teacher and coach, or as you, you could be doing this with more than one teacher, you'd wanna be thinking about designing an open-ended task of some kind, open-ended is the key, formative assessment, where you can see what kids know. You can look at that. So you can say, let's design an open-ended response to reading, let's say, or to an open-ended problem in math. And then let's compare that to the work that are the learning tar Let's compare that work, excuse me, to the learning targets for the unit. So you see that assumption that there's some learning targets or a success criteria driving the unit. Again, back to time, we're talking about one meeting to look at the targets and figure out the task. Oh, let's have them read this and respond in this way. And then we're asking for some time just to look at what the kids did. So it could mean you're looking at their Google responses and Google Docs, or it could mean you're looking at some sort of written, assess, um, written response or um, problem they had to solve. So that, again, is really early work in a coaching cycle, and it's no different than what we do normally. It's just in an online context. Now we're in the supporting of the planning and teaching phase of a coaching cycle. So this is really when a coach embeds virtually into uh, a unit. So if you're using Schoology, you would be invited into that unit or Google Classroom, you'd be added to that to that Google Classroom. And you'd be really keen on formatively assessing and monitoring student learning. So the coach can be there really thinking, how are the kids showing what they know? And then that informs that co-planning. And I'd like to suggest just a weekly co-planning, not too long, but to think about how the week go, a lot of school districts are posting one lesson per week. So on Friday, you may just look at that, look at course, you know, look at how the kids are engaging and go through anything technical you need to. And then the last question is, where are the students now? And you just do the similar thing as you did earlier, an open-ended task, compare that to the learning targets. It would just be a couple meetings and you're definitely looking to celebrate but also if you have IEP students or if you have any kids who are ELL kids or just generally kids who are maybe not engaging or not you know, proving that they have landed where you wanted them to land, then you would need to come up with a plan. So in total, we're talking about a four week coaching cycle, which is a ballpark, it might be longer or shorter, would be about eight meetings. And by meetings, I mean virtual, virtual meetings. Those would average about 15 to 30 minutes each. Your planning meetings would be a little longer. Your goal setting meeting probably a little shorter. It would just depend on, you know, the processing style of the teacher and how focused the, the conversation is, how many people are involved. It could even go beyond 30 minutes, but this can be done in short periods of time. So that's not a huge ask. A coach would have to be clear with the principal and with teachers on what a coaching cycle looks like and how they may engage um, with that coach. So this is, what, this is what the opportunity looks like. So I wanted to invite you to join our network. Um, if you've listened to this and found this to be useful, we have Facebook group, we have a community on our website, by email, by Twitter, by YouTube, by Instagram. And so I just appreciate that you're willing to join us and um, stay a part of the conversation. Thanks so much.